Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzma with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Uh, 78 degrees out there and kind of warm, but still no less. Always a beautiful day here in town. And I am talking to you right down the street from this pier. If you just follow this pier and went down about two or three blocks, there I am sitting in the coin store right now, the Coin and Precious Metals store. Uh, getting ready to give you some advice here. And what's the advice about? What's well, about all those questions that we have? We have questions every day about all kinds of things, especially about gold and silver. Uh, uh, there's so many unanswered questions out there. There's so much inf misinformation. There's so much good information. It's just hard to make out what's what. And it makes it a little confusing when you're buying uh, gold and silver and you're dealing in gold and silver markets. The worst part of it is, is when you get these big corporate, uh, sorry, I dropped the mic there. Uh, you get these big corporate uh, 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 media uh, people that uh, go out and CNBC, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal. I've seen I've seen the Wall Street Journal quote people that I know are complete freaking idiots. Uh, 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 I don't mean it like like they're mean bad people, but I've seen the Wall Street Journal quote. Uh, supposed uh, gold and silver and uh, precious metal experts uh, that really were no such thing as experts. They may have called themselves experts, but uh, that's pretty scary. And when you see that happen a few times, you realize there's a lot of bad information out there, folks. Well, speaking of information and where we get our information from, as I always say, I got rid of my Wall Street Journal subscription uh, after having it for 15 years because I got tired of getting one single viewpoint and a single narrative that they beat in your head over and over and over. Uh, unlike Zero Hedge, uh, which again, I don't get paid for them to say this. Uh, I pay a dollar a day for a subscription here, so I don't have to read the ads. But what I like about it, it's like a news hub, and it gives you all different kinds of opinions and a lot of stories that you're not going to read elsewhere. Uh, but meanwhile, not too much in gold and silver today. Uh, I think there's something up here that has to do with Bitcoin. So if you want to go read it yourself, uh, uh, it kind of looks interesting. But we got some things to talk about, and we've talked about Bitcoin enough. I'm kind of over it. It's not my specialty anyway. Uh, uh, far from it, actually. Uh, what is my specialty is buying and selling gold, physical gold, real gold, not the paper gold. Um, um, again, let's take a look at the headlines here. Not too much here, mostly political. Uh, and again, let's just totally skip it. If you want to take a look at the headlines today, be my guest. Uh, Zero Hedge is free. Uh, you can read uh, uh, all these articles that I'm reading right here for free, except if you don't pay the dollar a day, you get all those nasty, annoying ads. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say nasty, annoying ads. That's how you get it for free, by having to look at ads. <laughs> so really, nothing is free, folks. Uh, I remember, I think I was told that as a child. Ah, question, the big question. The effect of Fed fund rates on... Uh, Fed funds rates hikes on gold. You know, I've always uh, uh, heard, uh, uh, being in this business for a long time, that when the uh, Fed uh, uh, raises rates, you know, the, the rates that they pay out, you know, uh, that, that people uh, uh, will get paid for investing in treasuries and stuff like that. If people are going to, uh, uh, you know, get paid more, a percent, two percent, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, when the fund rates r rise, supposedly it hurts the price of gold. Uh, but you know, this is kind of interesting. I, I'm going to read this to you real quick. And again, I like Investopedia, man. They got so much cool stuff out there. And unlike Wikipedia, they don't put a political spin on it, uh, or I haven't seen it yet. So uh, if you got questions on anything to do with finances, always check with Investopedia first, in my opinion. Uh, stay away from Wikipedia. Um, let's take a look here. I'll read this article a little bit. While popular opinion is that interest rates hikes are bearish for gold, the effect that an interest rate increase has on precious metals, if any, this is interesting, is unknown since there's little... Uh, there is a little solid correlation between interest rates and gold prices. Uh, that's contrary to what I've heard over the years, especially, again, Bloomberg, CNBC, Wall Street Journal. Uh, they have always said, oh, well, uh, interest rates are, uh, uh, hikes are bearish for gold. Uh, however, according to uh, Investopedia, that may not be true, and we're going to find out here in a second why. Uh, many investors and market analysts believe that since uh, rising interest rates make bonds and other fixed income investments more attractive. Money will flow into higher yield investments such as bonds and money market funds and out of gold when rates move higher. Uh, and that has been the belief for a long time. Therefore, when the Federal Reserve raises its benchmark federal funds rate, weakness in gold should follow. Uh, well, there's a couple things we're going to touch on here. Uh, why the uh, uh, Federal Reserve really can't raise rates uh, and, uh, uh, and Investopedia talks here, 
why that doesn't always mean that much when they do. Uh, so there's two factors here. Uh, key takeaways. Some market watchers believe that higher interest rates send gold lower because of increased competition from higher yielding investments. Well, you know, that makes complete sense if you think about it. Uh, however, they've got a however here, and we do a lot of howevers on this show. <laughs> however, a long-term look through historic gold data reveals that no relationship exists between rates and gold. This is really interesting, and I didn't know this. Uh, through much of the 70s, gold prices rose sharply just as interest rates move higher. Well, you know what? Doggone it. If you think about that, that's true, too. Uh, remember when interest rates were, uh, I think it was 1970, what was it, 80 or something like or 81, uh, uh, when uh, mortgages were <laughs> Interest rates were getting like up to 20%. I think balloon rates for people were borrowing money for homes at like 12%, 15%. Uh, uh, interest rates had surpassed 20 I think, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, people would put money in money market funds and they were getting like, what, 10%? There's some crazy times then. Uh, the 1980s saw declining interest rates and a bear market in gold. So that's interesting as well because if you remember, the interest rates declined dramatically after the big uh, gold market uh, uh, of the 1980s uh, when gold had hit, uh, what was it, 900 or something like that. Other factors beyond rates, such as the supply and demand dynamics seen in most commodities markets, are likely to have a greater impact in the long-term performance of gold. And I think this is exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing the other factors. Uh, and besides, we're seeing a currency that just buys less and less, the fiat dollar. Uh, but we won't get into that because we've talked about that many times. Uh, so let me read this here. An historical look, even though the widespread popular belief is that there exists a strong negative correlation between interest rates and the price of gold, a long-term review of that respective past and trends of interest rates and gold prices revealed that no such relationship exists. Um, hmm, I think a lot of people do not realize this, especially the people that are always quoting how bad uh, uh, ra rising interest rates are going to hurt gold. Uh, that's not true, according to uh, uh, this. The correlation between interest rates and the price of gold over the past half century since 1970, and that's a pretty short timeline, uh, has only been about 28% and is not considered significant. Uh, I'd have to agree with that. A study of the massive bull market in gold that occurred during the 1970s reveals that gold's run up to its all-time high price of the 20th century happened right when interest rates were high and rapidly rising. Uh, Short-term interest rates, as reflected by one-year Treasury bills, bottomed out at 3.5% in 1971. By 1980, that same interest rate had more than quadrupled, rising as high as 16% in that same period. The price of gold mushroom from under fifty dollars an ounce to a previously unimaginable price. I'm sorry, of eight fifty, not hundred, nine hundred, eight hundred and fifty dollars an ounce. So we had interest rates raising, rising as high as sixteen percent. Look at that, that such a short period of time, nineteen seventy one to eighty, with a ten year span. Uh, and gold went from fifty dollars an ounce to eight fifty an ounce. So you know when you hear these talking heads and these people saying, well. Rising interest rates are going to uh, destroy the price of gold. Well, apparently, that has a 28% chance of being true, and apparently, it's got a uh, 20%. Uh, it's got a uh, what 32% uh, uh, chance of. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, get, I think I got my math there. No, 32%. Correct, 32% chance of uh, of uh, being uh, uh, wrong or right. Gosh damn, I just got confused. <laughs> here, let me get a sip of coffee here. Uh, you, you ever try to do these shows unedited? It gets a little tough sometimes. Anyways, anyways, there's my first anyways. That's my out here. Uh, gold prices had a strong positive correlation with interest rates, rising in concert with them. So there you go. Uh, at a time, most people tell you, well, when interest rates rise, gold goes down. That is not true, folks. It's only true 28% of the time, and 70-plus uh, 70, uh, 70 percent of the time, it's uh, 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 true. Not true. Oh, gosh. Here I go. I'm getting confused again. A more detailed examination only supports at least a temporary positive correlation during that time period. Gold made the initial part of its steep move up in 1973 and 1974, a time when the Fed fund rates were uh, the Fed funds rates was quickly rising. Gold prices fell a bit 75 and 76. Uh, so the protracted bear market that followed, beginning in the 1980s, occurred during a period when interest rates were steadily declining. So here you go. Uh, you had declining interest rates and you had uh, declining price of gold. Uh, so you know it doesn't really. Uh, uh, 
I don't think there's a direct effect by interest rates according to uh, what we're seeing historically and to what we're seeing according to the numbers. Uh, during the bull market in the gold, uh, during the bull market gold in 2000s that ran up to about 2011, 2012, interest rates declined significantly overall as gold prices rose. However, there's still little evidence of a direct sustained correlation between rising rates and falling gold prices or declining rates and rising uh, and rising gold prices. See, that gets a little confusing after a while. Uh, because gold prices peaked well in advance of the most severe decline in interest rates. Uh, we're going to move down here a little bit because it's a long article and I've got another one to show you here. What, drive go what drives gold prices? And that's the question. We're getting into our questions here for the big question mark of the day. Well, what does drive gold price? The price of gold is ultimately not a function of interest rates. Like most basic commodities, is a function of supply and demand, and that's what we're figuring out here in the long run. You notice it does say in the long run. While surges in supply can cause the price of gold to plummet, demand is ultimately the stronger component between the two. The level of gold supply only changes slowly, since it takes 10 years or more for a discovered gold deposit to be converted into a producing mine. Now that I did not know. I didn't know it takes on the average 10 years for a newly discovered mine to get uh, actually producing any kind of gold. Uh, that's kind of news to me. I guess I watch too much uh, gold, uh, gold mining on that Discovery Channel. <laughs> Seems like they get it done in a day. Uh, but no less, that's kind of interesting. Rising and higher interest rates may be bullish for gold prices, uh, simply because they are typically bearish for stocks. Well, the bottom line is, I'm going to get to the bottom line here because it's taken me a while to get here. So the bottom line, given the historical tendencies of the actual reaction of stock market prices and gold prices to interest rate increases, the likelihood is greater that stock prices will be negatively impacted by rising interest rates and that gold may benefit as an alternate investment to equities. Uh, this is what I've been talking about last week. Remember I was talking about, I think that the equities uh, bull run is going to be pretty much over soon. I think we're going to get into a commodities bull run, you know, uh, copper, oil, gold, silver, uh, and silver and gold. I think silver has been way too cheap for a long time. We're going to see silver just uh, fly through the roof at some point. But I believe we're going to be into a new bull market, but it won't be equities and bonds. It'll be uh, uh, commodities, uh, which will be the next hottest sector. That's just my opinion. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think it's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, given the uh, uh, the environment out here, so while so <laughs> while rising interest rates may increase the U.S. dollar, pushing gold prices lower because gold is denominated in U.S. dollars, factors such as equity prices and volatility coupled with general supply and demand are the real drivers of the price of gold, uh, and that's exactly what we're finding out. However, I believe this is kind of a really strange environment we're having right now because. Uh, there is a very short supply of actual gold and silver product out there. There's not a lot out there yet. Prices are down. So, uh, what this uh, what this article here by Investopedia doesn't take into account. It doesn't take into account the monkey hammering and the manipulation. They don't mention it anywhere in here uh, that you have to add into all this. It's very complex. Uh, so I think this is a good read, by the way. Put it on your homework of the day. Investopedia, where is it right here? Um, they have a lot of good stuff, but type in the effect of Fed funds rate hikes on gold, uh, and you can see it right here and read it for yourself. I think it's pretty good homework, and uh, you'll be smarter than the average bear if you read that. And that's my opinion. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Treasury, 10-year uh, Treasury rates, historical charts. Now these charts, uh, here, here's a 10-year right here. And, and why am I showing you this? Uh, because ultimately, it looks like the rates have been in decline since, what, 1982? They hovered around 4%. And look, look at that right there. That's pretty amazing. Uh, almost 15% uh, rate hikes. And that's when gold was hitting 850 $850 in $1980 is probably like $85. that would be like $8,500 gold now. So what a weird dynamic time that was. But look at the overall trend of interest rates. Uh, and look where we are right now. We're in that, uh, uh, they're talking about going uh, uh, zero interest rates and sub-zero interest rates. I don't know how that's going to uh, work, but some countries have already done that. So it looks like the uh, uh, the 10-year Treasury rate has just declined over time, and look where we're at right there. And I think the reason they won't be able to raise interest rates, now this is my opinion, is because the United States has borrowed way too much money. If the Fed were to raise interest rates, it would it, the cost of borrowing for the United States government and governments worldwide, and, and you know, would would 
it would bankrupt him. It would bankrupt the U.S. government. It would bankrupt this country. It would bankrupt a lot. The, the Fed is stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. They just can't raise rates. They can raise them temporarily. And these little temporary rates may have some effects on the price of gold, even though uh, we're finding out that 70-something uh, uh, percent of the time they don't. So, oh boy. Got to take a breath here. And uh, uh, anyway, I think that's an interesting. You should take a look at this. This is also this is macro trends, macro trends charts, and it shows uh, uh, fixed mortgage rates. Uh, oh, here the other th thing cool about these macro charts is they also show recessions. Uh, let's take a look at the recessions. Oh, let me get rid of that advertising. Uh, look at the recessions here. Uh, there's a recession during 1980. Uh, that's when we had $950 gold, and we had interest rates at an all-time high of 15%. Uh, both of those things at the same time, uh, which a lot of talking heads and a lot of people believe can't happen, but it did. Uh, and again, here we are over here uh, in another uh, recession, uh, 2000. This is actually the, the COVID. We could call this the COVID recession, but it, it started sometime before COVID, actually. And we'll get to that in a moment. That's a pretty cool story, too. Uh, there's uh, the great uh, uh, market economic crash of 2008. And as you can see, the trend is downward right here after the uh, economic crash. And we're not going to see any of this, I don't think, for a long time. I just think we're going to be in this uh, uh, sub-2% or maybe even close to zero uh, for, for decades to come, uh, kind of like the Japanese uh, economy did for years and years and years, a zombie economy, so to speak. Well, I don't want to make this a super long report, and I don't want to bore you, but uh, these are all things that you can look at macro trend charts, uh, and you go over there and uh, you know you turn off the recession, show the recession, uh, and it's got a lot of cool things that you can look at, and I recommend that you go and do this yourself as well. You'll learn more by doing it yourself than me talking about it and uh, uh, showing you occasionally. Um, best thing to do is just get your feet wet and uh, start doing the stuff yourself, like I said. Uh, I got it. The, uh, this should be on your reading list on a daily basis as well, gata.org. Uh, Pam and Russ Martins, a year later, we have no idea who got $9 trillion from the Fed. Uh, this is an interesting story. Uh, before the COVID virus, not many people know this, but there was a big major trouble in the financial markets. And here you go. Within a span of six months, the Fed, the Fed had pumped out, well, home. Uh, beginning in September 17th, 2019, and I remember this. This is right before gold and silver started cranking. A month before there was a report of COVID-19 anywhere in the world, the Federal Reserve turned on its money spigot to the trading houses on Wall Street. And again, not many people are familiar with this. Uh, by October, the Fed announced that it was upping these loans $690 billion a week again months before any report of COVID-19 anywhere in the world. Early in October 2020, the Fed announced that it would be buying back $60 billion a month in Treasury bills. Within a span of six months, the Fed had pumped out a cumulative $9 trillion in loans, folks. That's huge. To Wall Street trading houses. And this is where it gets really interesting, again, because a lot of people aren't familiar with this. It never made big news, but it really had a huge impact on uh, a lot of things and still is, I believe. According to its own spreadsheets, with no peep as to which Wall Street firms were getting the bulk of that money. So there was $9 trillion in bailouts before COVID-19. Somebody big or multiple uh, 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 banks or something was going to go down. They were going to go down. That's why they pumped in that much money and they kind of kept it secret and they still don't tell us who it is. That's the thing with the Fed. There's no transparency. They can do whatever they want and they can hide whatever they want and they can print as much as they want and then give it to whoever they want now apparently. Uh, so $9 trillion was uh, 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 not loaned or loaned or given uh, to either a bank or multiple banks or, or Wall Street trading houses uh, that were about to go belly up and bankrupt. Uh, and again, we don't know which ones. They could be the largest in the country out there, and, and that's more likely the uh, a scenario. So it's more than a year later, and the American people still have no idea what triggered that so-called repo loan crisis or which Wall Street firms were in trouble or remain in trouble. And we still don't know to this day, and that's a couple of years later. Uh, that should be troubling, folks. Uh, the Federal Reserve, as is typical, outsources money and money spigot to the New York Fed, which is literally owned by some of the largest banks on Wall Street. We wrote at the time the New York Fed was making these massive repo loans that, that this action was unprecedented in the Federal Reserve history for the following reasons. Uh, anyway, I'd highly recommend you read, read this report because 
Uh, this was in 2019. Uh, precious metals and silver really started to heat up uh, uh, at the end of that year, the end of 2019, the beginning of uh, 2020. And this is before the virus as well. Uh, good story. Go to GAT.org and uh, read this story. Pam and Russ Martins, a year later, we have no idea who got $9 trillion from Fed. Uh, this should scare you a little bit. And uh, this is, uh, again, an important reason why we own precious metals out here as a hedge against uh, uh, bad decisions by uh, people that make our money. Gold prices, the 100-year historical chart. Uh, we touched on this the other day. I was going to compare this to the rate chart over here, and where is that? Uh, we can still do that, but uh, again, good chart uh, by Macro Trends on here uh, shows recessions. Look at that. You can turn recessions on and off, uh, and I think this is really cool because you can look and see where gold had peaked, where there were recessions. There's 2008, pretty clear as a bell, and you can see we got into our bull market there. Here's another recession right here. Uh, and uh, we're still in it, apparently, I believe. And markets are, I think, going to continue to climb. I think we're going to see another up leg here, in my opinion. Uh, but really cool charts. I highly recommend you take a look at them. And again, put them on your uh, 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 book, bookmark bar up top there. I forgot what to call it. Uh, put it in your bookmark. I think you'll find it very useful. Um, well, that's really about it. Uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, this morning's uh, uh, dollar index and see what's going on here. And it looks like uh, the dollar is up a little bit, but between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. down overall. Uh, and again, here's another good chart too, the dollar index you can take a look at. Uh, there's all the years. And if you look, the trend for the dollar overall is downward. Uh, if you were to take a look at a chart that even extended out longer than this, you would see that it's just, a, you know, the dollar is just a fiat currency and it's a, um, never going to be going up like this over a period of time. And throughout history, all fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar and all the other currencies out there are going to just decline in their buying power. Well, that's really about it. Let's take a look at what spot prices have done, and I'm not too concerned about it. These lower prices provide you an opportunity to buy the dips, and silver's gotten monkey hammered again. Look at the low, 1708, and the high of 1735. Silver holding on to this $26 mark pretty good, but it looks like it did touch 2592 last night, so it did touch below that $26 mark. So I'm not too concerned about it. What I'm really curious about is uh, why gold and silver prices are way down. Mines have been closed for uh, a year. A lot of uh, producers that make bars, you know, mints have been closed. The producers of bars that make the bars, uh, silver and gold bars, they've been closed. Uh, dealers have been closed. So for the last year, you haven't really had any physical product. You've got an increase, a huge increase in demand for gold and silver product, yet the price is down. Uh, folks, there's something really, really wrong with this, and I still can't explain it directly. I think it has something to do with manipulation and monkey hammering of the markets uh, to help uh, cover uh, some big short positions in gold and silver uh, by some large banks were uh, uh, large financial institutions out there. Uh, that's one of my thoughts, and uh, I, you know I didn't make that up either. That's a prevailing thought amongst Ted Turner, and uh, not Ted Turner, uh, is it Ted Turner? I forget what his name is now. Uh, anyway, Mr. Turner, uh, uh, and uh, that's his prevailing thought, and uh, prevailing thought amongst of uh, a lot of other, Ted Butler, I'm sorry, Ted Butler, uh, uh, Ted Butler's thought is that, uh, uh, and he's been talking about it for 20 years, that uh, uh, governments uh, have been keeping the price of gold down somewhat. But again, I think this might have something to do with uh, bullion banks just trying to keep the price down so uh, these short positions uh, are not going to get hammered as bad when it finally does take off. And it will take off big. Uh, well, that's my that's my uh, conspiracy theory, and I believe I'm right on that. So anyway, it does provide you a good opportunity to buy the dips meanwhile, and uh, do not consider selling into this market. This is a buyer's market. This is absolutely a buyer's market. This is not a selling market right here. Uh, so uh, add to your gold stack, add to your silver stack, and uh, uh, if, you, if you've already added to your stack and your stack's as big as you can get, don't even consider selling it right now. Uh, just sit and wait, and things are going to get explosive at some point. I believe Believe we're going to get into a big uh, commodities uh, uh, market here and uh, silver and gold are going to fly along with some other commodities. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar finishing up the show and trust me, oh, it was a hard one today. I had to I had to do it uh, my start over a couple times and uh, uh, and it 
took me a hard one to get through today. Anyways, I don't edit these and it makes it even harder. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. And I said anyways about five times. You can tell how tired I am today. Uh, just a rough day yesterday. Uh, but thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And thanks for getting through this report with me. So uh, talk to you soon and give me a call anytime. 954-493-8811 between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Happy to answer any of your questions or tell you what the best deal of the day is. Again, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.